there's like always something gonna ha- oh excuse me not saying that word on here you've said it before so it's i know but i hate saying it on here anyway why i do all the time it's the f word i don't know vulnerability <laughs> vulnerability <laughs> sorry continue <laughs> no it's okay um to Enhance, the podcast dedicated to highlighting real stories told by real people. Hello, Enhance listeners. It is Sam, your host. And though I am not joined by Gabby today, she is still part of the episode. This is part two of Friend Breakups. Since it is a continuation of last week, there will not be an icebreaker. I didn't want it to just start abruptly on you guys, so I'm just recording a little intro now. Enjoy part two. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe all of the things, share the podcast with someone, uh, all of those things just help a lot with search engine optimization, especially now that we are on Google Podcasts. Thank you guys so much for the support up to this point. We love you so much and enjoy part two of Friend Breakups. Bye. And that was another another thing is that in her big message where she blew up, she accused me of actually doing stuff with him. She did it in a very passive aggressive way where she's like, I'm not jumping to conclusions that you d- that, like that you two did something, but um. I'm just like, it's very suspicious that blah, 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 whatever else. And, and this has taken up too much uh, space in my mind for the past three years. So I just need the friendship to be over. And it's like, dude, just say it with your fucking chest. You don't want to be my friend anymore. <laughs> say it like, with your chest. Yeah. Don't yeah. blame it. Don't sit there and sugar. Just, just do, just do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but she wouldn't have like blamed the universe. She kept trying to make it seem like it was a me thing. And really what it all came down to, and I'm not one of those people that will go and like talk to every single person I know about something when it happens, but I did talk to my closest friends and every single one of them, when I read the messages, just exactly how they were sent were like, this is projecting. This is, this is her projecting. This is something else is obviously going on and this is projecting. And I was like, thank you. That's exactly how I felt. Yeah. You know, like- I remember, t- I remember saying that like kind of to you. And I, al- I also said, I was like, also just, just leave it where it is. Yeah. Obviously you guys aren't going to meet eye to eye on this. Like, just leave it. Yeah. Which is so crazy to me because the thing is like, there's her and there's another friend that pulled some fuck shit within the past year that they were both my birthday is in March. They were both in person at my birthday. Like Barb drove like five hours to be there at my birthday for me. This was only three months before the incident where she like friend broke up with me. And that just like blows my mind. Cause I'm like, if this has taken up so much space in your mind for the past three years, what, what do you have going on on the inside where you're capable of coming to my house Staying the weekend with me, going shopping with me, going out for my birthday with me, getting shit faced with like taking pictures with me and my friends, having a good time, meeting people, enjoying like what do you have in your head that's off right. where you can right. act so sociopathic? Like this wasn't just like some event that she was invited to and I just so happened to be there and she was trying to distance herself from me. I was literally the center of attention. It was my birthday. I was mm-hmm. the one everybody was there for. You know what I'm saying? Like, she drove five hours to come be with me. How are you capable of doing that? You know, I mean, he- here's the thing. I think this is something I've, like, felt like I've learned a lot is, like, when it's time for them to go, it doesn't matter how they go. They just are going to go. Yeah. And it's going to be either super quiet, a shit storm, somewhat peaceful, somewhat not peaceful. There's always something that's going to happen. Some friendships are just, like, meant to just not be there. Now that I have um, flooded your ears with this for probably, I'd say, the last 30 minutes um, of talking, the question is, like, how do you handle that? Whenever somebody just does not give a shit that they've hurt you and that they're doing you wrong. And I don't want to say this to make it seem like she isn't that, like, you know what, I'm just going to say what I'm going to say. And you guys just know she has her own point of view. So don't paint her as the villain just off my word. This is just my experience. But when someone is living in another reality than you, when someone is acting delusional in that way, when someone is projecting and it's warping how they see other people, how do you handle that? Because you can't have a rational conversation with someone that's like that. How do you handle that internally? How do you become okay with that? What you have to do is you have to be the one to have the conversation with yourself. You have to be the one to be like, this sucks and this hurts. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to allow yourself to be angry, allow yourself to be hurt. But then also allow yourself to have empathy. I know that this whole time I've said that, like, I've given several situations where my empathy 
put me in a shitty situation. But in this situation specifically, you have to have empathy for someone else or you're just going to walk around angry. You know, you're going to walk around like not understanding. You're going to walk around bitter. So with her, with Barb, she was she's under a lot of stress. She has a lot of responsibilities. She has been through a lot, not just in the past like 12 years, but in the past five years. Past five years have been like destroying the different parts of her. I've seen mm-hmm. her get worn down and change so much. And I, the one thing that I do hate about this is that she didn't feel like she could come to me and talk to me. Like she didn't feel like she could come to me and say, Hey Sam, you're one of my best friends. We've been friends for nine plus years. I feel this way when we talk about my husband. And I would say, okay, same way that I responded to her when she messaged me very accusingly. Like I responded and was like, okay, like I think there's some miscommunication here. Let me clear this up, you know? And so I would have been more than happy to do that because that is a really weird situation to be in, especially when you've been hurt as many times as she had by her husband, you know? So having empathy, allowing yourself to be angry, allowing yourself to rant and be upset and hurt and everything else and grieve that friendship and allowing yourself to be angry that they can't have a rational conversation with you, allowing yourself to be like ultimately hurt, you know? And then when it's done, and you no longer are angry, allowing yourself to miss that person, allowing yourself to love that person again. Because the thing is, you cannot miss someone if they are still around. When you miss somebody, that means that you have accepted they have exited your life. I agree with that completely. In my experience, um, I cry a lot. I'm I'm a baby when it comes <laughs> to like friends. No, really, seriously. I'm a child. Um, and you know, friend breakups, I know we talked about it strictly like just friends, <laughs> but there are friend breakups that are relationship romantic wise. Like you, you need to be able to balance that. You need to be able to heal. You need to be able to figure out what the best way of, healing is for you yeah because like for me like i very much cry i am a crier i hate admitting i'm a crier because i don't like being looked at this is again vulnerability oh my god i don't like being looked at like i'm a weak person but i cry a lot i really do but that doesn't make me a weak person that just shows that i still really care about those people or that person um and that I want the best for them, but it does still hurt because that person or those people are out of my life. Yeah. I'm not a crier. I mean, I, I cry. Like, I cry like a normal amount. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel I'm like... I'm a crier. Um, I'm a I do crier. have... If I'm going through a really stressful period, I'll have, like, a good, like, cry. Like, it'll be, like, a, a regular cry. Like, it'll be, like, once a month, I'll have a good breakdown and cry, and then I'll feel better, you know? Like, if I'm going through a really stressful period. But for the most part, I don't really cry a lot. I cry during movies a lot, but... Not no, doing like, I, real life stuff. You look at me, I cry. You say hi to me, I cry. You breathe, I cry. I cry mm. all the time. Literally. <laughs> so ridiculous. for all my people out there that are not criers like me when it comes to situations like this, you're probably the other type that either shuts down emotion and becomes heartless, or you get really <laughs> angry, or you... <laughs> Yeah. that's so, just how you said it i was just like oh my god i did not expect that yeah well it's because it's that's how i typically was in the past like i would get very like mm-hmm. i just shut down emotion and care for that person and it would just be like vengeance fed like i'd be so cold and so i grew out of that but now it's like anger like i just get angry oh i get so angry and i'm i'm a thinker instead of a crier i will think myself do into you a angry black hole. cry huh i I angry cry. Do oh, you same. Angry now cry? I do. Sometimes I do that. Yeah. Sometimes if I get really because angry, you're so mad, you're so yeah. pissed off that all you want to do is just like punch See? something, but you can't, so you start crying. Mine's the opposite. Mine is that I get angry very quickly, but I start trying to process it immediately, so I'm not like staying angry, and it's like keeping my anger at that lower level and like processing it in the moment makes me cry. Like I'll get frustrated and it'll just like and like a cry will come out. I think for me, the hardest thing, because because I am a crier, is holding it in when I'm talking to someone that's pissing me off. I had a conversation with someone recently um, and I was mad. I'm mad at them. I love them, but I'm mad at them (laughs) because of just like our path right now is just very interesting. And I just 
they would say something and I'd be like, I literally want to sit here and cry. Like all I want to do is sit here and like show them that I'm sad, but I knew that that wouldn't like do anything. So I had to like suck it in and like hope for the best. Breathe the tears back into your it eyeballs. Was, no, like- it was, it was, yes. I literally, oh, oh my gosh. Then there's my mom. One time I was crying over a guy. I won't say which one because they don't deserve to know anyway, but I was <laughs> crying and my friend, actually Natalie, I know she won't mind cause it's not about her, but anyway, she was like trying to comfort me and she was like, it's okay, Gabby. Like, just have your feelings, whatever. My mom comes in and goes, are you crying? Suck those tears back up. And I swear on my life that they reversed into my school. The, what? What? the tears oh. literally reversed into my... Ask ask <laughs> Natalie. I swear to God. She, she was like, I never... I've never seen you stop crying so quickly. And I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, my mom's a savage. You do not yes. mess with her. Mm-mm. You say yes, ma'am. And then you go on. I said, I said, you're right. And then I was like, I don't even know what crying is. And I was yeah. like, am I heartless? <laughs> am I cold? Yeah. But yeah. Ugh. Just to summarize again, be, allow yourself to yes. um, feel, allow yourself to have your full blown emotions but also allow yourself to have empathy for that other person. Allow yourself to walk through all of those phases because you're not going to find closure in them. Like they're not going to give you any type of closure. You're just going to do it yourself. Like, you know, so, um, and it's very empowering when you do that. The only other story that I can think of is my most recent one. Um, and again, I'm going to leave out names and stuff. Pretty much the situation was, is that I felt very targeted because the situation had nothing to do with me. I still have really no idea what the heck is going on. Uh, But it is over and done with, so it's not a huge deal. It doesn't sit with me in any type of way. But I just was very targeted on something that wasn't my problem. Not my, not my monkeys, not my, my circus, not my monkeys. Um, And I tried to come forward with it because I'm a big communication gal. I need you to tell me when I did something wrong. I need you, I need you to point it out. I need you to bluntly be like, that really hurt my feelings because I, as much as I like to say I'm a people person, I sometimes do not gather every source of information that comes out of that person. So like, give me the look and be like, Hey, we need to talk. Yeah. And it might rattle my bones, but I need you to tell me. But anyway, so I was trying to come forward with that. And maybe I didn't have the best verbiage, but I pretty much was just like, hey, like, was thinking about that conversation and it just didn't sit well with me. And I just wanted to tell you that it bothered me. Don't want an apology, like don't need anything. But I just wanted to let you know that that just kind of bothered me, which started an upheaval with one of the, you know, individuals. And the other one was it was interesting because I couldn't tell if they were really honest or not. And that really messed me up because I just didn't want to be like walking on glass with anyone anymore. And so I ended up just being like, hey, you know what? (laughs) Let's take a break. Maybe I need a break. And I low key went through kind of like what we just talked about, like those those levels, those different moods of grieving almost. Yeah. And I came to the realization that I was like, hey, you know what? I think I think this is just where it ends for right now. If they come back later, if I come back later, great. But I think right now, again, we're not seeing eye to eye. And I I wasn't trying to say anything in in any attacking way, uh, even if it was taken that way, you know. And I I texted, you know, both of these individuals and just was like, hey, you know, I I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm tired of thinking about it all the time. I love y'all please say hi to me if you see me in public, but we're, we're not best friends. Like we can't do this anymore. And, you know, they reacted the way they reacted, but you know, I do think about, you know, Oh, if we were still friends, but then I'm like, but what would it be like? You know, they're very busy with their own lives and they, you know, have special things that have, you know, come their way. And they're very talented, smart individuals. I literally still love them with my entire heart, but I really did have to kind of think like, okay, is it smart for me to get back into these friendships? Yeah. Yeah. In the end of the day, are they there for me? And that's what had happened. And I know that was a very short story, but I mean, end all be hall. They are beautiful, amazing people. Love them. 
don't have any ill will against them. It's just part of the part of the story. Yeah, which actually brings me into the last one that I think I would want to talk about because most of my friendships have been like a outgrowing kind of thing where it seems like most Mm -hmm. of yours have been like situational based where it's like a situation happened that finally brought all of the like problems to the surface and it's like I think this needs to end you know with mine it's been very like I outgrew you you know and not saying that they didn't grow on their own they may have outgrown me as well oh yeah but I also I just outgrew them I outgrew the role that we played for each other in each other's lives and this person I'm gonna call him Chad white boy name hi chad yeah so chad um and i have been friends for seven years wow. yeah seven years and with chad the thing was the um the line between friendship and more than friendship kind of got blurred at different points and i will fully admit that was mainly because of me it was not like it was not on him much at all there's only one situation that was really on him a lot and um i'll get into that but it for the most part it was me and so with that though um we had a friendship that was very chill very cool like chad was always like one of the cool guys that um he just was known as like chill go with the flow anti-drama so on and so forth however the thing was that chad like surrounded himself with people that constantly had drama and like try to fix the situation but gabby said they're nodding her head because she's like yeah because she knows who chad is so chad would like surround himself with people that constantly had drama and it would be people that he didn't like or people that he would get annoyed with people that he didn't want to be around anymore but he still was around them for whatever reason um and it really what it came down to was that he just wanted to fix things he was a fixer and so With that, though, our friendship was really chill for, like, the first two years of our friendship. Um, And then there came a point where we both got out of really, really, really bad relationships. And I kind of touched on this some during the vulnerability thing. But on that, was it was more of a romantic point of view, like, how I felt when I tried to romantically open up to someone. This is strictly going to be – well, not strictly. It's going to be more from a friendship point of view. And so with this, we have both just gotten out of really terrible, toxic, abusive relationships. And um, we were hanging out a lot. And it was really nice because um, he was someone that I always had a really chill, laid back, go with the flow friendship with. And it was nice to have that change of pace because at that point in time, I was still really good friends with Whitney. Amy was still in and out of the picture after the whole incident with that dude happened. Um, there were just different people that were around that were not contributing to me healthily at all. So it was nice to have Chad, who I felt like was contributing to me healthily at that time. And we had a very nice friendship. I mean, we would just go for rides around town and we would go fishing together. We would go like hiking. It was, it was just really cool, you know? And so there came a point where, like I said last week, so I'll just summarize where the question of like hooking up, becoming friends with benefits, being more than friends came up. And in that situation, this is the one where I would say he was more of the aggressor. It was not, and when I say aggressor, that sounds aggressive. I don't mean it like that no, at all. It's not. Um, it's not aggressor. Yeah, but and so in, more forward about it. Now. Yeah, and so and in this situation, the very first it, it getting brought up very first was very much me and him. There was it was very he says he says you know what I'm saying like there was no third party there to witness this. So this really is just my word against his and my point of view so know that but the very first conversation of it we were riding around so um chad was in a place where he had just gotten out of a relationship with his girl and we'll call her chelsea just in case she comes back up and um it was a very similar situation to my ex who i had just gotten out of a relationship with and um in this basically he was not straight and he was ready to explore the other side of his sexuality. He was attracted to women, still is as far as, as far as I know. Um, so <laughs> but, far as I know. <laughs> I haven't talked to him in a while. But anyways, so um, but yeah, so he was just ready to explore the other side of his sexuality. But he kept saying things that were very leading, like, I wanna I would wanna hook up with like I'd want to I would wanna be in a relationship. I'd wanna hook up with a friend, I'd wanna get involved with someone that I was comfortable with and already know that's a guy like blah, blah, and just kept saying things like that. And I like straight up asked him, I was like, me? Like, are you talking about me? And he's like, I mean, if you'd be down. And I was like, yeah, I totally would. I was like, if you want, I was like, I kind of feel like I'm in the same boat where I just got out of a relationship and I'm still kind of processing all of that. And I enjoy spending time with you and we're really good friends. So sure. You know? 
And so we never did anything though. Like after that conversation, we just continued hanging out as friends. But there came a situation where he and I, basically the same thing from last week. Um, I saw him on Tinder and we had been hanging out a lot and it was kind of flirty, but it was nothing, like there was nothing serious. Like I, when I say that I was mainly the person who like came at it from a romantic angle, I was like this situation was very tit for tat, but from that point moving forward, it was definitely more on me. And so, um, but this is where that really began. So I saw him on Tinder and I thought about it before swiping. Cause I was like, I'm going to swipe right. Ha ha ha. We've already been like flirting and stuff like that. But then I was like, no, really think about this. And I was like, I kind of am interested in him. It's been like a month or so now of us just hanging out and talking and like, you know, just having a good time and good friendship. I kind of would be interested in something more. And especially since we haven't crossed that front, like that boundary into friends with benefits, you know? And so, um, next time we were hanging out, I told him, I was like, Hey, I saw you on Tinder and I'm just wanted to let you know that I am interested in you as more than a friend. I was like, I know that we talked about like being friends with benefits. And I know that's still probably like, it's still a possibility, but I just wanted to let you know that I do, I am interested in you than more than a friend. And when I swipe right, I'm going to swipe right with that intention. And I would like for us to like start talking to get each other, know, getting to know each other that way. And I was like, if you swipe right and we match, I know that you'll feel the same way and be interested in too. I was like, if you don't and we don't match, we'd never have to talk about it again. We can just keep doing what we're doing and hanging out and it's no big deal and we'll just keep being friends. And he was like, okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know. Later that day, we matched on Tinder. <laughs> and so it, we we like talked on there a little bit, kept talking like on Snapchat, text, whatever else. But then it was like a complete 180 at some point whenever we were trying to hang out and we were at like this movie night thing and he came in and was very flirty with me, like very touchy, stuff like that. But then the moment that, and it was just me, him and Whitney at that point. But then Kyle, who Whitney was dating at that point in time came over and then a few other people came over and that's when the vibe just like changed. And it's very different. And then after that, he just kind of like ghosted me for a little bit. And it was crazy because we were like literally living in the same, the same apartment building. And so I just didn't hear from him. And then he like, I ran into him, Whitney and I were like walking out one night and we saw him like hanging out with a bunch of girls and stuff like that. And it was just really weird. And then all of a sudden, like a few weeks later, he came back into the picture and was just like, hey, how are you? Like, we haven't talked in a while. Can we hang out? And I was like, yeah. So basically this whole back and forth thing happened throughout that, throughout that like entire era. And um, it was during the summertime. So during that entire summertime and it was, but it wasn't just with me. That's the thing is like, this wasn't like at the time I thought this was very much like a, he's fucking with my head. Like he's really right. messing with me. But after the summer was over with, I found out like, Oh no, he was doing this to multiple people. And it wasn't that he's, I don't think he's a bad person by any means whatsoever. I think he was still very sh like scarred from his past relationship and that he was processing that. And so, um, but I found out that he was doing it to multiple people. And he told me about this girl that he started hooking up with. That was like one of his best friends ex. And it was a whole thing. And, um, basically though, he just like, then it became strictly friendship. Right. And then we made out at a party. And then it became strictly friendship again. Then his ex-girlfriend was coming to visit and they were talking about maybe working things out. But then he invited me to come hang out with them. And then he made me be the one to be on his team and be like there with him all night and was being flirty with me in front of her to the point where she realized that something was going on and then started like slandering me on the internet. <laughs> and like, it was just a Love for you. Yeah, I know. And so it was just a whole thing where like, it just kept going, kept going, kept going. And then he ended up like hooking up with one of my best friends. That's not really important to this, any of this because she and I are still very good friends. We've worked out all of our bullshit and like, it's super cool. But anyways, so hooked up with one of my best friends who was in a relationship and like that friend felt terrible and it like crushed their entire world. But he was like, Oh, I'm interested in you. Let's like talk. But then once the summer ended, um, he was like, Oh no, never mind. I, I don't want to, I don't think you're over your ex and, um, I don't want to be with anything like that with you anymore. I, and so then after that, he, they continue to like hook up off and on for years. Um, and that was a like whole thing, but basically he and I just still did, did that whole back and forth thing. And I remember I asked him several times, like, why 
is it so easy for you to like hook up with all your friends or date people and so on and so forth, but you never do that with me. And really what it came down to, and he even admitted this to me like years later, that he just wasn't comfortable with the sexuality yet. But I kept asking him, I was like, why don't you just like communicate with me? I was like, you literally said that you wanted to be like friends with benefits and then we didn't. And then it was just like a whole, like, we just did this whole round and round thing where like we'd make out at parties and stuff like that. And so then he finally told me, he was like, you're not someone I could just hook up with. And I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? That's so cryptic. Like, that's so like, that's so vague. So at the end of this whole little era that we were in, I um, just laid it all out for him. And it was years later, years after, like two years after that initial conversation began all of this during that summer. And um, I finally just told him, I was like, I have very deep feelings for you. Like, I don't want to be just friends with you anymore. And I was like, and you've given me a lot of like ups and downs, a lot of crypticness a lot of like vagueness and we've been friends we've stopped being friends we like and I was like I just tell me now like do you care for me the way I care for you and will we ever be anything you know and he said no and so that broke my heart and I was like I completely understand thank you you know and thank you for being honest and uh, it hurt oh my god it hurt and I did cry. <laughs> I cried oh, then. Yeah. And so at that point in time, I was like, okay, I'm done. Like, I'm done pining after him. I'm done feeling this way. I'm done, you know? And so then I got involved with another guy, and that was a whole shit show and everything else. But it allowed Chad and I to become friends again because I no longer had, like, those deep, like, feelings for him that were unrequited. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were not reciprocated. And so I was focusing on someone else and so we became friends again and he and I ended up in a very similar situation where we were both dating someone who was a little bit younger than us not like illegal younger than us but it was right. just like a different phase in life and I, I say dating it was very much a situation ship for me he was dating someone though and so um and I was being manipulated again it was just a whole whole thing and I, I was trying to be the fixer in that situation so it allowed he and I to connect on a different level and everything we became friends again and then after that the next summer this was right before covid started he started seeing this girl we'll call her sarah and so sarah was not like anyone else that chad had um had dated sarah was like so kind and sweet and funny and just like to be in the same room with her was to love her and to be just like enthralled with her you know such a sweet and kind person and when I met her, I immediately was like, okay, this is the one for Chad. Being friends with them was really easy to start with because, I mean, they just like, they were just amazing. Like, I loved being around them. And then COVID happened and I started hanging out with them a lot because we were all um, essential workers, like frontline workers, whatever. And so we really were like, it was a whole pod thing. So they were like, they were like the only two people that I was hanging out with. From there, Chad started saying things to me that seemed flirty to me. But the thing is, is that he and I have had confusion before too, where he would say like, I just speak flirty, like it's nothing to you, you know? And so I kept trying to keep that in mind, but he would reference things like, like an old marriage pact that he and I had like years ago, where if we like, were still single at like 40 or something like that, like we would marry each other. And he would, he referenced that like in front of Sarah, and that made me uncomfortable, but not only did it make me uncomfortable, but it made me realize that I still had feelings for him. And so I kept trying to like lay boundaries for my, like I never, th this is not on him. I tried to lay boundaries for myself and never communicated that with him, but it just kept making me like feel like I was in weird situations and it was like breaking my heart all over again. And there was like a point in time too, where I was, um, there was this guy that I hooked up with some um, uh, that worked at a bar that I frequented at. Gotcha. Um, and the whenever I called it off because it was a really weird situation and I didn't feel right doing it anymore. And so um, Chad and Sarah were hanging out with me and in front of Sarah, Chad said, um, oh, well, let me just go like get dressed up in like my really nice clothes and blah, blah, and I'll take you down there and make him jealous. And I just like, to me, like, I don't, I would be like hurt if my boyfriend said something like that in front of me to someone else. And it's someone that I know that there's been some type of past with, you know, because Sarah was aware. And so I was just like, what? I like, I didn't know what to think, you know? And so then basically some other things came up where I realized that I had been really harsh to Chad in the past about things because there was something that I blamed him for that turns out it wasn't his fault. And it pushed this whole conversation where I was like, Hey Chad, 
you're one of my very best friends. We've had a really great friendship for the most part. You've been a really great part of my life, so on and so forth. But um, I need to lay this boundary because I still have feelings for you. So I know that you probably don't mean anything by it whenever you say these things, but it seems like flirting to me. And I was like, so can you not say it? You know, like, can you like just take those things and like leave them behind? I was like, it doesn't have to affect our friendship, whatever else, so on and so forth. And his response was not what I expected. Like, I expected him to be like, okay, yeah, totally, I get it. Just know that, like, I don't have feelings for you, right? But he got, like, very angry and very combative. And that's something that he's he's normally not like that. Like, he normally was not the type to be that way, you know? Um, he usually tried to stay very cool, calm, and collected, and, like, you know, it was a whole thing. And so, I, and he basically, what, and it, this was so long ago, like, I'm paraphrasing a lot, so I, you know, apologies if something isn't, exactly right to anyone that may know about the situation i don't know <laughs> but basically um he was just it was basically like well can you just like take space away from me and that way you can come back around and like get over me and then come back around and then i want like i don't have to like change how i speak and i was like um i think that that wouldn't work because how many times have we done that before i was like i am gonna take space i was like i'm gonna take some space from you because I want to solidify like the beginning of a new type of friendship. I was like, I love Sarah and I feel guilty being around you two and having feelings for you whenever I also love Sarah as a friend and like would do anything in the world for her. He was like, well, what do you want me to do? Just leave her for you. And he was not saying it in a way where it was like, it was an offer. He was saying it very accusatorily. And I was like, no, that's definitely not what I'm saying. I was like, I love you guys. And I was like, you guys are very happy together. And I think also it was really poor timing on my part, to be honest, because there were some things that were going on in their relationship that I will not get into that I knew right. about at the time. And I did not take that into consideration when this happened. And I think that really affected his reception to it. You know what I'm saying? Like the way he received it. So I wish looking back, that's something I feel like I should have done differently is like, been more empathetic to what they were experiencing as a couple at that time and not putting this on him at the same time that this was going on. I should have just taken physical space and like, you know, just been like, Hey, I'm just going to hang out by myself for a little bit, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And like, then whenever it was the right time, you know, like confront it. Open and up. So, yeah. Yeah. And so basically he was just like, well, what do I tell Sarah whenever she wants to know why you're not around? And I was like, well, I'm, I want to talk to Sarah. Like, I want to be the one to go to her. I was like, don't say anything to her if you're okay with that, like, or if you can help it. Or just, like, tell her a little bit, but then don't give details and just say, but Sam wants to talk to you about it himself. And, you know, like, because she was out of town at the time. And so I was like, when she gets back into town, I'm going to give it a hot second, like a couple of days, and I'm going to ask her if we can grab lunch and I'm going to talk to her. He just didn't seem to like that. And so basically, long story short from there, I was just like, okay, like, I'm going to leave. And I was like, I am confident, like, about, like, our friendship. I'm confident that I care about you. I'm confident you care about me. Like, I'm just going to take some space, and we can revisit this later, and we can talk about it, but I do want to talk to Sarah. And then maybe talking to Sarah will help the situation, you know? And so he was like, okay, and he just seemed really angry. And I tried to hug him, because then that's just, like, a normal thing. Like, it was not, like, me trying yeah, to Yeah, you were just like, saying goodbye. Yeah. Like, whatever. And he was just really weird. And then after that, I ended up getting COVID from work. I worked at a hospital at the time so I was not able to be around anyone for three weeks because I was out of work for three weeks and then I still took like a week after that to um take a break away just to make sure I didn't like spread it to anybody and so after that um we uh it basically blew up found out that he had been mad about it the whole time and that he did immediately tell Sarah but he told Sarah that I did not want to or that I didn't um plan to talk to her about it that I asked him not to say anything to her and which was not true. And so she and I talked about it and she was very understanding, very receptive because Sarah's just a lovely fucking human being. And so, mm -hmm. um, and I thought everything was fine. Like I thought it was all chill from there. But the thing is like at that point in time, I definitely felt a lull in mine and his friendship because I did try to talk to him again. And um, we talked it out and we came to a better understanding and I did confront him. And I was like, you like twisted my words to Sarah and you made it seem like I was like trying to steal you away when I wasn't. I was just trying to lay a boundary. And he's like, well, that's just how I felt at the time. And I was like, okay, I get that's how you felt, but that's not what happened. Like, that's not what the conversation was. And he got it then, or at least I thought he did. But um, basically from there, like, I really had to think about it because I didn't want to be his friend anymore, if I'm being honest, at that point in time. And this was like two years ago. Right. So I did not want to be his friend anymore, but I did care about him. 
And honestly, that whole situation helped me get over him. <laughs> like, I did not have any feelings for him after that. But um, Sarah and I had such a great friendship. And I was like, well, you know, like, I feel like he and I have come to an understanding. I love Sarah to death and want to be friends with her. So I feel like this will be fine. And it was for two years. <laughs> and, um, and then when I got here to Charlotte, um, I was Snapchatting. Like I was talking to him and Sarah a lot just because I was trying to keep in contact with all of my friends that weren't here. And both of their birthdays were happening like very close proximity to each other. And so I was trying to get information like to help get them a birthday present, but send it to their house, like or get them birthday presents and send it to their house. That way, like, right. because I wasn't there. So I wanted to like do it through Amazon or whatever. So I finally just got him something that was like based off a favorite TV show at her gift picked out. And I was going to get her like an epoxy um, kit like to make like figurines and stuff like that because she's super into lights, arts and crafts and stuff like that. And she's a cool painter and like, yeah. And um, so I messaged her and was like, hey, by the way, this is coming to your house. I was like, when you see it, if you could snag it and then hide it and give it to Chad on his birthday, that'd be awesome. And she didn't respond. And I was like, that's really weird. And so there came a few instances where I would like text her and him and I just didn't get a response. And so it was like three days after his birthday and I texted him and I was like, hey, did you get you know, the birthday present I got you and he didn't respond. And so I, and I messaged him on Snapchat so I could see like, okay, is the message going through like what's happening? And he just opened it and didn't respond. And so I messaged him and I was like, Hey, is everything okay? Like what's up? Like, you know, are you on purpose like ignoring me or what, what's good? You yeah. Know? What's going on? And he on? basically was just, yeah. And he was basically like, um, I've been done with our friendship for a while. I don't want to talk about it, but um, I feel like I owe you an explanation. And I, initially was like well don't talk about it if you're not comfortable with it but i would like an explanation because this is very random but then after i got over the initial shock which took me about 15 minutes and i texted sarah too and was just like hey like <laughs> you know like yeah i know it took me about 15 minutes which took me 15 minutes <laughs> yeah and so i texted sarah and was just like hey so chad told me that he doesn't want to be a friend anymore sure you're aware i just wanted to see where you stand i was like i've always viewed your friendship mine and your friendship separate from mine and his like you know i view i value you as a person on your own i was like but i don't want to put you in a weird situation and basically she was super nice about it but she was also just like i have felt put in the middle for a while now and i'm like what is a while I haven't known about this. The last thing that I knew that we had an issue with was two years ago, you know? Right. And so basically I just, after I got over the initial shock, which took me about 15 minutes, I was like, I don't, I don't want an explanation from him. I don't want to know. Um, and I just, she said, you know, like, I think, you know, you should talk to him first and then you and I can talk. And I was like, okay, Sarah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I want to talk to him. I was like, I just texted him and told him I don't want an explanation. So, you know, and I just sent him a message and I was like, hey, Chad, I was like, um, I try to be super nice. And I was just like, I thought about it and I don't really want an explanation from you. I am, um, I just feel like it would put me in a position where I needed to defend myself or it would cause an argument or it make me like feel bad and like I just don't want that right now and if you're just done with our friendship and there's nothing that's going to change it then there's no point in talking about it just know that Correct. I'm sorry and I care about you and I'm sorry for whatever I did that made you like get to this point where you just didn't want to be friends with me anymore I was like I am very busy and I was like and I know that that causes a rift with people so if I've been inattentive to you I'm sorry like you know like I just tried to like cover any basis that it could be because I wanted to be empathetic for him because I still to this day still care about him a lot as a friend, you know what I'm saying? And, right. um, but like, we're just not compatible. And it was also like, whenever I sent that message and I was just like, I don't want an explanation. If you don't want your birthday present, let me know. And we can arrange like a, like a, like to send it back. I was like, if you do want to keep it, I was like, by all means, it was for your birthday, keep it. And so when I sent that message and he opened it and didn't respond, I felt this like, spiritual level deep in my soul relief leap like just i felt this like release of energy and i felt like i could like breathe for the first time in a long time and that wasn't just because of him like just literally a month before that is when um barb pulled her shit you know what i'm saying like so there were things that were happening during that time that i just had a lot of weight on me and whenever i like ex just i entered this place of acceptance because what was sad and what i realized it was like it did not matter what i did in my friendship with Chad, I would never be good enough. No matter what I did, it would not be enough to have a friendship with Chad. Um, 
because I don't, and I don't know why, actually. I have no idea why. But I just, I finally was like, gosh, it does not, I can give you space. I can be respectful to you. I can go with the flow. I can be okay with it when you don't respond to messages. I can come to your house and hang out with you and Sarah. I can do what, like, I can literally let you call all the shots in our, in our friendship. And it's still not going to be enough for you. I can get over you and not have feelings for you anymore and put healthy space between me and you so that it doesn't put a weird gap between you and your girlfriend that I also am friends with and love genuinely. And it's still not going to be enough for you. No matter what I do, it's not going to be enough for you. And that brings me back to the whole point of like outgrowing people. Yeah. Sometimes you just outgrow people. And there, there's it nothing happens. else to it. It happens. Yeah. And that was really what it was, is that once upon a time, Chad and I were compatible in a very toxic way. I had codependent things and I was the scapegoat drama friend that people would just would like throw their like, oh, well, that's just Sam being emotional and everything else. And Chad was a fixer. And Chad, I create like me being emotional and not getting along with people and not liking it when people run all over me or push my boundaries or, you know, being combative, being manipulative, all of that. It created situations for Chad to fix. And eventually we grew out of each other. I don't, I can't speak to who he is right now because honestly, even though we were friends for the past few years, we didn't really talk a whole lot. There was not a lot of communication between us. I mainly hung out with Sarah. So with that, like, I don't know if he's still a fixer trying to find things to fix. I don't know. But I stopped having problems that he could fix, you know? And that means, and this is not like a dig at him. This is just simply how toxic friendships and toxic relationships work. When you no longer have value in the thing that you brought to that relationship or friendship, you don't stay in it anymore. Like, you're not there anymore. Like, all of my friends that I have right now, none of them are perfect. All of them have their own toxic traits. All of them have their own thing. However, the value that is in our friendship is that every single one of us are people that are going to therapy. We're people that are bettering our lives. We're people that we are self-aware. And that not all of us are in you know, therapy, but like, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm over here like, this, I'm not in yeah. therapy. I probably should be, but I'm not. <laughs> but, yeah, but we're all, you know, we're all doing something to better ourselves. And we're like working toward a future that us 10 years ago would have, wouldn't have thought were, was possible. I'm at a place in my life right now where I am so happy and at peace with every single thing that is happening around me. And I was just talking to one of my friends about it yesterday where I finally like have achieved true balance, where I have learned that just because I feel one way does not mean that I can't have another way. Example, You're I have right. always craved a relationship. I've always wanted to be in a romantic relationship ever since my ex, but I've just taken a lot of time for me. And I haven't met anybody that meets my standards, you know, and like can have a healthy relationship with me the way I want. And so Perfect. I can be happy being single and content being single but also crave a relationship at the same time and that's exactly where i'm at i'm so happy being single i'm busy i'm traveling i'm working i don't have the time to sit there and try to be in a relationship i don't do i want a relationship absolutely but i'm very happy without one and so i've just come to a place in my life where it's like i'm at so much peace and it's because of who i'm surrounded around like all when all of those people left my life I started doing the things that I said I wanted to do. Whenever Whitney left my life, I started traveling and started prioritizing myself and my career. I started putting time and effort into the way that I looked and the way I dressed. I started feeling like the main character and the pretty friend. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt like I was allowed to be the friend that people looked at. You know what I'm saying? Whenever Barb left my life, I started a podcast. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Like I got with one of my friends who has I proven. I did it. Yeah. So I got with one of my friends who has proven to be a good friend to me and has proven that she like is capable of growth and everything. And we started a fucking podcast, you know, and whenever Barb and I wanted to do that so many times before, whenever and then I have been wanting to be like happy being single and comfortable traveling and just be detached and like a wildflower like for so long. And I thought that having a friendship or a relationship with someone who already seemed that way would bring that to me. But the moment that Chad left my life, I finally got it. You know, yeah. like I have wanted to I agree. Yeah. And I have wanted to have control over my eating disorder. I had wanted to have control over my mental health in a way that I hadn't before. And I do. 
and it's after all those people left my life and you know it's like they build you it even though like it it sounds like these stories they build you down or like tear you down they actually very much build you up in a way that you don't even realize that they're building you up because you get to learn that lesson and grow from it and you know hopefully take on that next challenge yeah and i never have to feel like i'm not enough again in a friendship because no matter what i'm enough for me and i honestly i do have some really solid friends like this is I have a very, like every single person that's in my life, I have a healthy relationship and healthy friendship with, you know, like I'm not in a place where I have friends I have to worry about being fake to me. I have friends I have to worry about going behind my back and lying about me. I have friends that are going to twist my words. Like I don't have to worry about any of that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have to worry about friends that are going to be unreliable. I don't have to do any of it. I am fully surrounded by people that meet all of my needs. Yeah. And on that magical, beautiful note. Yeah. I think it's time. Yeah. We've made it. We've reached the end of uh, the whole friend breakup duo episode. What a journey. What a journey. My AirPods are close to death. They've screamed Uh, in my ears. They've died three times during this entire recording. Yours have? Yeah. Yeah, mine are doing a little crackly thing now where it's like (laughs) in my ears, you know, but it's fine. Um, (laughs) So thank you guys so much for tuning in and for being here with us on this specific journey. This has been amazing. I guess this is four weeks in a row now where Gabby and I are going to be on episodes together. (laughs) I love it. I love Hey, celebrate. (laughs) Honestly, yeah. Break yes oh my god so <laughs> if you want to find the podcast you can find us at um enhance on apple Podcasts, spotify and uh, anchor and it's just enhance and then if you want to find us on youtube we're at enhance podcast um we have the e on every single one that's just the logo and you'll find us and then if you want to find us on social media i'm at sam if you do that's s-a-m-m-e-d if you do no spaces no funky characters nothing like that i'm that on instagram twitter tiktok and like i told you guys last week or on the part one i recently started getting into pinning i'll have to drop (laughs) my like username for that too or i'll have to like change it to all the other stuff but i have a manifestation board on there creativity some like spiritual stuff so please 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 go follow me there too and uh gabby do you want to throw your links out Yes, my Instagram is uh, gsabot1234. And then my TikTok is gabbys80. Illy, come follow me. Follow the podcast. Like the podcast. Subscribe to the podcast. Comment on the podcast. Yes. Live your best life. Absolutely. One of my AirPods just died. (laughs) Um, R.I.P. But yeah, so also please, 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 like Gabby said, subscribe, comment, like, all that good jazz. Mm, We mm, need mm. it. We have new listeners every week, but our follower count and subscriber count is climbing slowly. We'd like to speed that up a little bit. And also slide in our DMs. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Give us your stories, your experiences. Maybe one day we can do like a listener story episode where people tell us about their healing and growth. So I think that would be awesome. Possum. Um, but yeah, well, we love you guys and thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. Don't forget. We have new episodes every Saturday and bonus episodes the third Wednesday of every month. Bye. Bye. Thank you.